Hi there. It's me again. In the city again. I'm going to a place um, which is basically to fellowship, to worship together. And I think it's going to be a nice time. Uh, I hate the fact that living outside the city means you have to take extra time for transportation. I would have to literally leave about an hour and 15 minutes before um, just to get on time. And I don't even technically live that far away from the city, but when you take public transportation, it takes time. Okay, hi! <laughs> I'm with two, they're laughing because they won't be on camera. But I have two friends with me here. Um, and we're just going to uh, a place that I'll show you guys and I'll link down below. It's called Pin Casa Catan. Hon? No? Hanasicha Catan. As <laughs> Meza Pin Cas. Zaliad? No, but yes, Gam Pin Cas. Lord, that. Anyways, maybe I don't know my city at all. I'm gonna link wherever we're going below. But um, am I repetitive? Every single time I come out here, I say that the city is empty. The city is empty again. I'm wondering when it's gonna change. Ben Yehuda, ghost town galore. Good morning, everyone, from my bed. <laughs> I keep appearing here. I have a desk. I don't know why I'm not using it, but I am sitting in front of my computer, and before me is a um, small lawsuit. I am suing my landlord. <laughs> I think the law is definitely on my side. Um, and I think that I'm going to win this. There's, there's no way I'm not going to win this. Um, I have a conversation with uh, a lawyer, uh, that's basically helping me, um, for free, which is very, very, very nice, which means that I don't have to spend any money on this lawsuit and I'll give you guys an update in a second after I have a conversation with the lawyer. I'm just gonna sit outside for a second and give you guys an update. <laughs> Baby Milo! Dexty! <laughs> okay. Here's some updates. I just got off the phone with the lawyer and we were going through all of the details of the case and it's a small lawsuit. So um, we were calculating things and how much things are actually worth and he actually realized that we miscalculated something I did. Um, and so he even brought the amounts up on different things and so that's helpful if I win. Um, and because it's a small lawsuit, you don't actually have representation in court. You are the representation, your own representation. The second update I have for you guys, it's all happening really, really fast. So if you've seen in the previous vlog, I talked about wanting to go to a school so that I can basically write my book, which is a fantasy novel. And I was looking at a specific school that was recommended to me by uh, two people that I know, like a theologian that I've known for many, many years, and uh, and his son-in-law, who is my my pastor and my like 
boss in a sense and um they basically uh, recommended a specific place and i said i think i'm gonna go towards that and so we've been uh talking in emails in the last few days and it went from me asking could you guys recommend me and then they said something about me needing a ged i don't have a ged i don't think that's necessary for me to get one um, and so I don't think I'm going to go that route. So I literally said, can you still get me in without it? And he said, yes, I'll try. Um, and so between Friday, when they answer that email and today, the head of the uh, department that I'm wanting to go and study in their department, uh, he already messaged back on an email and said that they would love to have me in their program. I don't know what that means as far as like, I need to be basically clear on the fact that I don't have a GED. And I need a scholarship. And um, he said that we would have a Zoom conversation between him and his assistant, administrative assistant. And I'm just shocked because it's all happening super quick. I don't know when the beginning of their program is. I'm not shocked that it's happening in the sense like I'm shocked that it's happening quick. Because within a few days, I literally have basically an answer that they would love to have me in their program. Um... So that's all the details I'm okay with saying right now. It's going to be a busy week, but I'm up for the challenge. And hopefully I can go to sleep early today because I went to sleep at about 3.30 a.m. and woke up at 9. So I'm tired. <laughs> but hopefully I can uh, get all the stuff that I wanted to get done today. And tomorrow is a new day. Good morning. Everyone, I'm going to try to not get rain on my cell phone, but I'm heading towards the city and it's a rainy day. It's not so much windy. I am not wearing the right shoes, but oh well. Um, You know, you guys know that I'm honest with you and vlogs are basically the highlights, for better or for worse, of your week, your day, your life. I want to be real with you guys. I realize that I'm really, really, really struggling to sleep, to wake up at normal times, especially being a freelancer. Your schedule is your own, meaning there's no boss to fire you if you don't wake up on time and get to the office on time. So that's so much a thing of discipline that I'm not able to sleep on time. I think it's more emotional and mental. And my thoughts in the morning are sort of, they're lonely. And I find myself being sort of miserable and disappointed in myself that I'm not able to do things on time. and. And I think that's a very real struggle that freelancers go through, but I'm also realizing it's not just a freelancer thing. I feel like I have literally been, oh, wait a second, I got a haircut. I'm gonna show you guys that. I'll show you guys properly in a bit. I look a bit funny right now, but I'm realizing that in the last few years, I've gone through so much trauma and, and so much hardship that I think at some point you're sold and your brain is sort of like, nope, don't want to do it anymore. Don't want to do anything hard. I'm going to counseling through BetterHelp. If you guys have heard about BetterHelp, I found a wonderful counselor. Been in the business for 16 years. You can feel it, like he's really, he knows what he's talking about. I'm saying this because I think YouTube, Instagram is full, full of these influencers that they have their lives more or less together. They wake up on time, on time, they wake up at like five and they do this whole avocado toast, journaling, uh, going to the gym thing all before 7 a.m. And I wake up at nine. And so this isn't me dissing those people I think that they're wonderful and I think that there's a place for them in our society but it's also important to be real about the times in life where you just can't 
and I'm not saying I have a solution for it. I'm trying my best to find it, but this is real. As a person who has gone through a lot of trauma in life, periods of long, long, long depression, anxiety, XYZ, it's, it's an uphill struggle. Now I'm on my way to the city to work, and then to go hopefully to a movie with some friends, and I think it'll be good. see my hair cut a bit more I decided to go short um, I don't know I just wanted to change my hair felt so unhealthy so I just did this Israelis we have a thing that when uh, it comes to rain we don't like it <laughs> we like it when it gets green and that the kinet is filled with water but we don't we don't necessarily like being in the rain we don't do well with it I think I'm going to uh, withdraw some money and then sit at a coffee shop and try and edit. In the evening, um, we're gonna go see Willy Wonka. So I think that'll be a fun experience to get out a bit. And, but I'm so happy that I brought this umbrella because <laughs> it is raining. I'm quiet down okay. in just a minute. Settle down and have another one. Because your design of the game never remains. Until you're undone. I hit the wall to the limit. I start over like you just begun I didn't lie to you Because I never knew you Only time will tell Only time will tell It won't be over It's never over Now I let my feelings in It won't be over It's never over Now I let myself be it was a pretty clean movie and any age can watch it and be happy. I like the fact, my hair is going crazy, I like the fact that they didn't do it like the original, um, that they didn't try to be the original movie. Um, I thought that that was a good move because there's nothing you can do, like the classic is the classic. Um, so I was happy that they didn't try to emulate it. Too windy, too rainy. Okay, I'll see you guys at home. Now you give him everything you want, you understand? No.
don't have to take this part out because there's music behind me that is copyright. Actually, um, maybe I can link you guys this person's music because he's amazing. His name is Emmanuel. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, he's a worship leader. But I wanted to show you guys where I'm at. I am at Dugit. Ta-da! And I am on a filming day for Shiranu TV. And I'm going to show you the vlog. Diana, the sweetest person, always says hi and accepts you with open arms. Everyone loves you in the office, you know? Just tell me about things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, this is their office. Let me show you guys the view from the other side, which is also spectacular. Wow. Just wow. If you guys remember, it was already here for another filming day of Shilano. I'll link that up in the cards. But, um, Gosh, you can't beat this. You can't beat this view. Look at the ocean. So pretty. I'm not from here. I asked my sister, where are we? So we're in Rothschild. You can see it's almost like a sort of like a promenade-ish um, but with like um, bike bike access. So a lot of people ride their bikes here um, and walk their dogs here and it's sort of like in the middle of these two very busy roads but it's very pretty. So if you guys notice, you can see these signs still have hostages and um, it's just insane that also some of the posters have been removed because as time goes on, we discover that some of them have been killed in captivity. This isn't, this isn't normal that you have inside a country. Literally, we had hundreds of people, like 200 and something people. We are setting up. Um, and we're gonna start, so it'll be fun. So, I interviewed uh, two people, and it was okay, but uh, I think we went to a different area because people are sitting there with their coffees and things, and they don't want to answer such such a deep question. So, we're gonna try again. The last person I just interviewed, he is a rabbi, like here in Tel Aviv, and he actually referenced he actually referenced uh, Isaiah, uh, where it says that uh, people won't won't war against each other anymore and he really had sort of like heart and an intention to help people understand that we're not we're not wanting to do bad but in order to have goodness in the world you have to fight against evil stumbled upon uh, four young people that were at the Nova Festival. So for those of you who don't know yet, the, the Nova Festival on the 7th of October um, was a festival that was basically like dancing and, and art and they were dancing for peace. That was the whole point of it. And uh, on that day, the terrorists infiltrated and they basically gunned down. There was a thousand and something people there and 300 and something people were gunned down. They were literally hunted down. How do you ask a person what they think that's been in such a, a terrifying event? I felt very, um, very not adequate to, to ask these questions.
come to the pool. So that was a wrap. Uh, we actually did the intro and outro in the office. And <laughs> the moment you point a camera at me in silence with a lot of people around, just like staring at you and watching you, I think my, my brain sort of shuts down. Now I'm just walking towards the beach because the office is not far from it. And then I'll go back home. All right.